Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tiara Smith, and I am a volunteer with AARP California. Welcome to everyone who is joining us live. Today, we are here for an AARP California Webinar Wednesday conversation with our special guest, Sue Ellen Haggerty, who is a nutritionist at the Santa Clara County Department of Public Health to talk about food safety and healthy eating. So we also encourage you to share this stream now on your Facebook page, so that way your interested friends and family can also join us in today's conversation. Hi, Sue Ellen. How are you? Hey, oh, it's so nice to be here. Thank you for including me. Thank you for all the AARP members that are joining in. Yes, Sue Ellen, thank you for joining AARP California today. I, as you know, AARP California is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that works on behalf of our 38 million members nationally and 3.3 million members statewide to enhance the quality of life for people as we, as we age, which includes working to promote the health and well-being of older adults. Again, for those of you who are just joining us live, my name is Tiara Smith, and I'm a volunteer with AARP California. So welcome to everyone who is joining us live today. And again, we're here with our special guest, um, Sue Ellen Haggerty, uh, who's a nutritionist at the Santa Clara County of Department of Health to talk food safety and healthy eating. To that end, Sue Ellen, uh, we're thrilled to have you with us today uh, to talk about how people can practice food safety, healthy eating, especially during this current public health crisis. And with that said, let's jump into our, our first question. Um, so many of us have been doing a lot of cooking at home and preparation during these uh, last six months um, of shelter in place. And you know, when we think about food safety and understanding expiration labels, especially when it comes to eating healthy, uh, all of those things have become, have become really important topics for us. Can you share with our viewers how they can practice food safety at home? Oh, I'd love to. And again, thanks everybody for giving some focus to nutrition. It's such an important part of my life. And I think the most important thing we can do right now, as always, from the beginning of time, is to really frequently wash our hands with hot soapy water for as long as 20 seconds. To do it anytime during meal preparation, before, during, and after. The other thing I think... Um, the most important thing is to separate um, raw foods. TR, you know what I mean. Like, and even in the grocery cart, you know, or in our shopping bag. And certainly when we get home, keep the raw things separate. Yep. And then the last thing, I think I get questions about this a lot. We still strongly recommend everybody rinse off your fruits and vegetables before you cut them, before you eat them. Even if you're going to peel them, it's really important to still thoroughly rinse uh, fruits and vegetables. Yes, yes, absolutely. And when you say raw, when you say raw foods, just to clarify, you mean like raw meats um, away from away from like fruit, fresh fruits and vegetables. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. perfect. And so, thank you, Sue Allen, for that for that overview. I know many people struggle also to figure out what is fresh and what isn't. And we and sometimes people struggle with the labels. So expiration labels can be puzzling. So we have best buy versus sell by versus expires by. What do those terms mean? And do they mean something different depending on the product? So if we're talking about milk, bread or meat, do those terms mean different things? Oh my gosh, it's such a good question. So many people, and I'll be honest with you, whatever it says on that, it's not required. It's not a government requirement. Oh, it's the way the merchant is trying to make sure produce are not produce, but other, you know, foods are, are, are being sold. It, it mostly is still a, a reflection of peak quality. So mm -hmm. we're talking about the best freshness mm -hmm. and the best flavor. But often dairy products can last seriously one to two weeks past that expiration or sell by date. Mm -hmm. um, uh, bread. You asked about bread. I think it's an obvious thing, and all of our viewers know if it's molded or if it doesn't smell right. You know, even if it smells sour or something, it's not quite right. Yeah. The bottom line rule is, if in doubt, you throw it out. Yes. But 
back to the meats. I think that's one thing. I always personally try to use it within maybe one to two days after the recommended date. That means it's going to taste the best and be the freshest. And if not, put it in the freezer. Um, meat and, and leftovers the same. Once they're in the refrigerator, you know, a couple days, if you're not going to enjoy them, share them with a neighbor, um, stick it in the freezer and freezer, you know, we could probably last things in there for six months or so. Yes. Yes. I love that. Especially the part about sharing with your neighbors. Um, thank you for, thank you so Ellen for just breaking down those differences. I hope our viewers feel a little bit better about, about knowing what those labels mean. Um, so also in this time of coronavirus, do you have any tips for us on how we can prepare food safely and cook and eat healthier in general? It's back to the golden rule that you all, you, you Tiara and all of us have taught our, our families that yeah. cleanliness is next to godliness. And we're going to take care of our souls and our innards, but we got to take care of the outside of us. Yeah. So washing our hands regularly, especially during the time of COVID, mm -hmm. is so essential. Yeah. Um, the other thing, though, I always remind people about sanitizing surfaces. Um, yeah. You can use a teaspoon or I'm sorry, a tablespoon of bleach with a gallon of warm water, but sanitizing our countertops, our refrigerator and freezer handles, um, cutting boards, we always remind everybody that, that we just gotta be especially careful. Yeah. But back to your question on overall good health, what's the easiest way to be healthy? I have a slide for you that talks about choosemyplate.gov. And again, I work for the government. I'm really proud that there has been a recommendation for us to eat in a way that allows us to live long and healthy. So half of all of our, of our daily um, foods, whether it's a snack, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, it should be vegetables or fruits. This is where we get all the antioxidants. This is where we get all the minerals and the vitamins that reduce our risk of every kind of disease known. Mm -hmm. It helps our brain health as well. We'll talk a little bit more about that at some point, I'm sure, but half um, of all of our items, our, our daily intake should be vegetables and fruits. A quarter of all of our, um, proportionately, should be those carbohydrates. Like, yeah. like is brown rice though better than white rice? I remind everyone that it's a quarter of the plate and half of that portion should be whole grains. Like like whole grain um, breads and whole grain pastas. There's more nutrients, mostly fiber, and that's gonna help us reduce lots of lots of diseases. On the My Plate slide, um, and we'll make sure you all have rest, uh, reference to it later, but just a, a small portion, a quarter of all of our intake should be protein. That's one thing with the American diet. In the past, we've eaten a little bit too much protein. It's not good for our kidneys, it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. But protein is great. We just, um, things like tofu, eggs, fish, chicken, beef. We just remind um, everybody how important it is to have fish a couple times a week. And then the protein's no larger than a deck of cards. No larger maybe than the, the palm of your hand, if that helps you decide. Yep, right hand, yep. <laughs> That's the perfect amount of protein. That's perfect so we don't hurt our kidneys, but we have enough nutrients to grow properly. Yes. Yes, yeah, so well, I love these practical tips that you that you use. I think, you know, when we think about portion sizes, um, it is really easy to think of things like using our hand or that my plate um, slide that you showed to our viewers. Uh, do you have any tips for people who are just simply not in the mood to cook? I mean, we're in the house all the time, and sometimes we just don't feel like dirtying up any dishes. So, what 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 safety tips do you have on ordering takeout or for people who choose to dine out? Oh, well, I'll tell you, this has been a very challenging time, and I'm proud of all of you. I'm proud of us doing the right thing and social isolating, and we have to really follow the orders that are out there. Like right now, we can't even eat in a, in a restaurant in most counties. Indoors is not permitted. But what a beautiful time to allow outdoor dining. Yeah. And for you folks out there that are good with a barbecue, TR, you're probably good with the barbecue. Being outside, <laughs> keeping ourselves social distancing is really, it's a blessing, you know, to be outdoors, picnics outdoors. But we must always keep our masks on and stay six feet away from anyone that's outside of our 
our immediate um, home or our family. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely enjoyed having some meals delivered first time ever, but allowing others to help us live in a healthier way right now. Mm -hmm. You can order from your favorite restaurants. I mean, seriously, some of them will even deliver uh, an alcoholic beverage. Um, there's some nice options. And then you can always do the drive up. So if you order it and have it ready for you, a lot of times they'll bring it right out to your car. And um, I promote that right now. I think it helps us all feel just a little better about ourselves. It's uplifting knowing we're helping our community merchants. So everybody eat, give yourself a treat. if You can manage it once in a while from an, an outdoor vendor. Yeah, yeah, uh, there, there's just, there's so many options to continue to support. The local businesses and still be able to enjoy some of our favorite restaurants during coronavirus. So you utilizing those delivery services to help, you know, just take the pressure off having to cook. <sighs> it's just it's so um it's so remarkable. Um and you know, like you mentioned earlier, if you if you do go out, you can please wear a mask, practice social distancing. Um, but you know, please just be safe, but uh, don't feel like you have to cook every day uh, during the pandemic. And let's get in. Oh, go ahead. No, you don't have to do the dishes. I, don't, I love oh, to cook, no. but what a treat for all of you that are doing so much wonderful cooking and baking once in a while. Give yourself the night out. No dishes yeah. tonight, right? Absolutely. And and like you said, there are a lot of places right now that are doing curbside pickup. So um, you can always call ahead and then, you know, just roll up and they'll bring it right out to your car. And then there you have it. So um, earlier you mentioned brain health and I'm pretty sure our viewers want to know um, what are some, you know, what are some foods that are good for our brain? We know that the Global Brain Health Institute have shared some tips on how we can eat better for our brain health, but what exactly does that mean? And what are some foods that you would recommend um, to promote brain health? Well, the good news is the brain is part of our whole body. And that choose my plate, which I know a lot of you are familiar with, that good balance of a healthy meal. But if we follow that in general, I think we can feel pretty comfortable that we're taking care of our whole body and including the brain. But I'll tell you, there's something really special out there about some amazing blueberries, very much on the, the list of a lot of research. Mm -hmm. Anyone that wants to look it up, you can find there's been research done on trying to keep the brain in high function from Stanford to University of Washington, uh, Harvard. There's so many wonderful recommendations out there. But I'll tell you, I have a, a slide I wanted to show you. There's a lot of common common um, foods. So again, if we keep eating lots of fruits and vegetables, like I said, half of everything, um, we're gonna be in good shape. Here we're talking about trying to get leafy greens into your diet pretty much every day if you can. And a lot of us do try to have a salad every day. So way to go, you're doing the right thing. An additional vegetable, and one of the vegetables that I recommend all the time are cruciferous vegetables. Those are things like cabbage or kale, broccoli, you know, and bok choy, Brussels sprouts, my sister loves cauliflower. <laughs> all of those, whether they be even frozen, canned or fresh, offer us some amazing nutrients that have shown in so many, so many cases to reduce the risk of disease and improve brain health, all because of their antioxidant um, properties. But nuts and a lot of walnuts come up on every study. So let's keep walnuts definitely in our pantries. And then blueberries, like I said, we call them brain boosting blueberries. Try to have them for a snack a couple times a week. And it's a treat. I know sometimes blueberries can be a little pricey, but again, um, trying to have them a couple times a week is associated with having a brain boost. Mm -hmm. And beans, I know a lot of you viewers are, are vegetarian and it's nice to remember that beans, not only are they a great source of protein, but have a lot of other great attributes, vitamin Bs coming out, you know, so many different ones and also fiber. So beans, having them three times a week or every other day, whole grains every day is my recommendation. Fish, eight ounces a week. For me, I gotta have that twice a week in two four ounce servings. Poultry a couple times a week. We're not really in brain um, in brain health. I'm not as much promotion of red meats. 
And then the last two things, olive oil. I definitely think that um, there's lots of oils to cook with. Olive oil is the perfect thing to add though as a dressing or perhaps a, a salad topping. And then red wine as well as caffeine, we see them on a lot of studies. Welcoming you all to continue with your morning cup of coffee and your evening glass of red wine. So those are some great ideas about heart health. Yes. And brain health. <laughs> I, I I love seeing that graphic on the list of, of brain healthy foods. I know as for someone who, who loves wine, I love that we can have that that glass of red wine. Um and also like when people look at that, look at that list, they may also also realize that they're already eating some of those things already. So you're probably already eating the things that are making your brain nice and strong. Um, so thank you, Sue Ellen. That is super helpful to know. And, you know, but there's also another aspect to nutrition, especially right now in during this public health crisis, and that's being able to shop and eat healthy on a budget. Um, Many of us are watching our food budgets closely these days. So do you have any suggestions on how we can eat healthy, but also kind of, you know, stretch those those food dollars a bit? Oh, I'm with you. We're all cooking more at home. And it's a beautiful thing. And for the grandparents to be teaching their, their grandchildren special recipes. For me, I think the best advice I have is always to do a quick little inventory. So I know, and we all know what's in our pantry, what's in our refrigerator, in our freezer, so that we can do a little meal planning. And then number two, make a list and stick to it. That'll help you stay on budget more than anything else I know. The other thing is it also gets you in and out of the grocery store quickly, Tiara. You know, a lot of people aren't as comfortable being out in grocery stores right now. We need to get food, but Mm -hmm. The quicker to get in and out, the better. And having a list really helps with that. So, um, and then the third tip I have is not to underestimate those coupons. Oh my gosh. I looked in, you know, I always want to throw it out, but the mail I had the other day had so many great coupons. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is to always do a web search. If you really take the time to do a web search, you know, for in online coupons, you can really save a lot of money that way. But most of all, eating fresh fruits and vegetables in season. That's the most important advice. And I know we've talked about this. It's great to go to the farmer's market and get it as fresh as possible. But even if not, using the frozen or canned is still a great option. But when we know something is in season, it's always going to be less expensive. It's also going to taste a lot better. And it's not going to have put such an impact on our environment. Right, right, absolutely. I'm definitely with you there um, with the utilization of frozen vegetables and fruits. I mean, they're they are frozen at their peak ripeness, and they still have a lot of nutrients um, in them. And also, they are less expensive sometimes than than the fresher than the fresher counterparts at the grocery store. So, if you see that deal that says ten for ten, you know, feel free to grab that that frozen bag of veggies. Um, and use that in your cooking. Um, they're just as good as, as the fresh ones. Um, and they're going to last a lot longer. You don't have to be nervous about thinking, oh, I'm going to waste, exactly. something's going to spoil, or it's going to be you know, mushy. The quality, just like you said, you're so right. Yeah. And, and it's prime. You know, and, and I know we, we've talked about this before, but like also there's that, there's that meal prep timing aspect. Um, for, for some people, they may not want to spend all, all evening or all day in the kitchen. So a lot of these fresh or frozen um, veggies come in the steamable bags where you can just pop them into the microwave and then they're done. And then you can just season them how you like. So um, don't sleep on, on frozen veggies. I agree with you. And if anyone was interested, I think I saw a question in the chat about trying to make sure we have enough protein. Those great, easy frozen veggies and adding some tofu or some, you know, I'd like to make cheese sauce myself, but <laughs> adding, you know, some beans, making that delicious. Great idea. As far as ordering out too, um, <clears throat> there's so many wonderful, where I live, I'm so blessed. There's so many great vegetarian options. And a lot of times it, it's harder for vegans but if you're able to tolerate dairy products, there's so many wonderful options that include a lot of cheese and tofu and dairy products. So we're lucky we're, we're living in a great time. Awesome. Thank you so long for answering uh, Grace Sonia's question there. 
And um, before we before we end our conversation today and get to some any other to get to any other questions that the audience may have, um, what resources or or any additional thoughts or recommendations do you have for our viewers? Um, and what should they take away from our conversation today? Oh, great. Well, the one thing I want to remember, we haven't talked about it all, but you know how important I think it is for everybody is stretch, <laughs> exercise. Yay, you gorgeous girl. All of us, every age group should get exercise every day. If you're able to get outside and get some fresh air, the blue sky always gives me a little, I mean, it helps to be outside. But again, we have to be sure we keep our masks on. Yeah. Exercise every single day. And if you can do as much as 30 minutes a day, that's for ideal health. The other thing, the last thing I think is so important for all of us to remember how important it is to stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. Drink lots and lots of water. And ideally replacing any sugar sweetened beverages with water because we know it's so much better for our overall health. Absolutely. And I also have one more slide, um, Tiara. I wanted to make sure folks did um, know where they can access information, certainly about um, the choosemyplate.gov. And even if you just put that in a Google or a search, you can find there's so many great information. Um, on this slide, I actually showed you one place where you can search for any topic. There's a lot that are specifically for older adults. There's also a lot that cover food safety. So anything that I said today, if you'd like to get some more information, those would be great resources. And then again, to try to eat in season, so the harvest of the month. And again, if you just um, try to Google uh, harvest of the month, you will find our website as well. But eating healthy in season, um, that is the Santa Clara County um, government site too. So you'll find any, any information you need, including anything to do um, during the coronavirus pandemic. Lovely. I love that. Thank you, Sue Ellen. And we do have a few questions here. Um, yeah. So one question is, how do we make veggies taste better? So we know pe sometimes people have you know, issues with maybe healthy food being bland, but um, how can we just add a little bit of flavor to them? Flavor is a great idea. You started off just right. But you know, there, even before that, there's a way to make vegetables more appealing. And that is the way you cut them. Mm. A julienne carrot, cutting things in very much smaller, which of course take more time, but hopefully all of us have a little more time right now. But um, cutting um, things in much smaller allows them to touch the taste buds in a little bit more. Mm. Um, I love, um, you know, again, carrots are, are a great example. I love them um, raw, but they taste even better if they're held in water. Mm. And um, but vitamin A in carrots, is a fat soluble vitamin, so it doesn't doesn't dissolve in the water, but it does help them taste better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true we do lose a little vitamin C when we we choose um, to have them in in you know ice cold water baths, but for the most part, they will definitely taste a little better that way and keep their texture nice. Yes. As yes. far as seasoning, though, the recommendation is to stay away from salt. That's the one recommendation you're always going to hear from from dietitians and trying other options, um, other seasonings and trying turmeric and, and you know, delicious um, spicy seasoning sometimes can be much more flavor, right. flavorful and right. make it more fun. Yes, I, I, I love adding curry powder to, to my fresh mm -hmm. veggies, especially steamed veggies. I'm definitely with you there on salt. So I, I think another great tip is to also add in some fresh herbs if you can. So if you're someone who really likes raw veggies and you're trying to figure out a way to, to jazz it up a bit, um, you can make a really good light salad dressing with some fresh herbs, especially like things like mint or basil. And that really just adds something to those to those veggies. So um, freshness is key when you want to uh, make your vegetables just taste a little bit more delicious. Um, I want to come over and have some of your yogurt dip with some <laughs> fresh herbs. But seriously, getting outside, this is a perfect time just to grow some herbs, you know, get some seeds and one flower pot and make yourself a little herb garden. Yes. It'll yes. smell good. It'll feel good. It'll make a little difference in our lives right now. Yes. Herb gardens are really easy to start, too. And, you know, we have, oh, okay, this is a really good question. Do we need to use Lysol on to-go to containers um, when takeout comes? 
I'll be honest with you, I try not to touch too many takeout containers at all, but when I get them, mm -hmm. I transfer everything, the food onto a plate, I wash my hands for 20 seconds, mm -hmm. throw the takeout container away. I have never Lysoled or cleaned off a takeout container, but I, I appreciate the question and I understand it, how we're all trying really hard. Remember that the virus is definitely spread through any kind of uh, nasal droplets. Hopefully anywhere you're using and you have, restaurants are not open unless they have everybody and all their employees are going to wear a mask. It's going to protect any droplets ever touching any of these, you know, takeout materials. So by law, I think you're in good shape to bring a takeout, takeout thing home and not have to sanitize it. Yes. I yes. do, however, remind you all that you want to minimize the contact with things from outside of your home. So enjoy taking it out of that container, get that container thrown away soon, wash your hands and enjoy it. A nice treat. <laughs> Thank you, Grace Sonia, for, for asking that question. Thank you so much for answering. Um, we do have, we have a, I think we probably have time for maybe one more question. And this is about uh, fruits and veggies that are in season right now. So we talked a little bit about the importance of having in season fruits and veggies. So could you list a couple or a few that are in season right now? Yeah, what's in season? Cherries, right? Are you all enjoying cherries? Oh, I love cherries. And, you know, we're close enough that we're getting some local stuff, but it's still fun sometimes to let children or relatives or spouses or sweethearts pick out something different. Um, we're coming to the peach season as well, all the pitted fruits. Um, I actually have an apple tree that I grew from a seed in my backyard in a very large container and I'm harvesting <laughs> apples right now. So oh, that's just, exciting. I love, wow. Yes. And you, you, you did bring up pitted fruits like peaches. There's nothing like a nice, ripe, sweet peach in the summertime. And it is still oh. summer. So, um, if you can pick some of those up, definitely get them. Um, Sue Ellen, thank you so much. This has been such an informative discussion. I uh, thank you for answering our questions and giving us helpful tips on how to stay healthy, eat healthy, and stay safe. Um, for uh, you, oh, people can access the Santa Clara County Public Health Department's website uh, for free free food safety and nutrition resources. So if you go to secgov.org and type in nutrition, you'll be able to find a lot of the resources that Sue Ellen and I just talked about. Uh, and for more information on how you can stay safe during the pandemic, please visit aarp.org slash coronavirus. And that is aarp.org slash coronavirus. Thank you, Sue Ellen, again for joining AARP California today. It has been such a pleasure talking with you. And to our viewers, we hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us for a webinar Wednesday Facebook Live conversation. Sue Ellen, would you like to say goodbye to our viewers? Oh, I just am very honored to come into your lives in any way. I hope you know I really appreciate being with you. I hope you all take very good care of yourselves. And I know in, at the end of the pandemic, we're gonna be really proud looking back and how we managed and use some of our own common sense, enjoy cooking at home a little bit more than ever and um, stay healthy. I'm with you, Tiara. Yeah. Keep your mask on, stay healthy. Yes, and six feet away from others, please. Um, please everyone stay safe and I hope all of you have a great day. Thanks for joining us.